yeah man it's just going to be good to take a load off you know just finally get down to just get to my desk get some easy stuff done yeah i think i've just got this quick review to do it's some kind of case it shouldn't be too much bother it's going to be absolutely not again Seriously, Silverstone, do you hate me or something? This is the Silverstone CS382. This is their newest 8-bay DIY tower NAS case. And just like the previous video I did a few weeks ago, this thing's huge. And I will say right now, if you saw the YouTube shorts we put out, a few early bits and bobs we published about this device already, I tell you right now, this improves over that previous 8 bay case in practically every single way. Indeed, it only really gives up on one thing, one of the two 5.25 inch bays. But when it comes to a DIY NAS case right now, I'm going to give you the TLDR. I'm really, really impressed with this. I will say it's not perfect. Certainly, its scale, even without the big old retail packaging, is going to be something of a headache. And although confirmed pricing is a little thin on the ground, and I'm sure later in the video we'll have the real pricing on screen, all of the early pricing I've seen for this device does certainly rack it up quite highly against a lot of tower servers out there. But for now, let's get this out of the box and get a good look about what exactly we get for our money on this 8-bay case. For those of you that were wondering what exactly this is packed like, this is it. Absolutely humongous levels of protection and foam. But I think let's move forward and get rid of this. And there we go. That is the CS382 case there. Again, pretty darn big when it comes to the accessories you're getting with this device. You've got your quick start installation guide and instruction manual for installing pretty much everything you're going to need in there from additional fans to the motherboard. You've also got are your accessories there in terms of the screws for your MOBO, your PSU, individual storage bays and more. You've also got brackets there for individual component placement and keys for that front mounted tray panel. So pretty much everything you're going to expect there and what you would kind of like to have on a DIY NAS case. There's not that much standing out for it. But who exactly are Silverstone? I've kind of rattled really into the intro for this video. Based in Germany, Silverstone have been a mainstay in the world of um, DIY NAS cases, PC towers, RAID cases, and more for a very long time. Even if you've had the most tangential career path in the world of technology, chances are you've come across them in one form or another, and particularly if you are into DIY solutions there. Now, this case being here on the channel is the direct result of my previous video where in around 50 percent of the comments everyone commented why are you going for the old hat case why aren't you getting the johnny big bananas new one and that is what we did we got hold of this for the channel and the review and frankly i understand exactly what you're all talking about in terms of this being just a natural improved evolution over its predecessor in practically every single way now on screen i'm sure are the specifications but in quick brief summary there for you this is an eight bay tower solution it supports both sas and sata drive installation there's an additional two bays of sata installation inside there's also an additional cavity for a three and a half uh, sorry 5.25 inch storage device to go inside that say storage you can use a you know optical drive media in there or you can also use caddies for other drives as well on top of that there is an additional um slim 9.5 mil um optical drive module slot inside there as well there's been vast improvements of ventilation and um in terms of uh, dust collection and cleaning on this something we'll talk about later on with the removable mesh panels on top of that, this device supports um, MITX, DTX, and M80X motherboards internally, alongside ATX PSU support as well. In terms of active cooling, this system arrives with three active cooling fans inside, two directly attached to the newly improved uh, storage cages inside and one rear mounted fan it also supports up to 168 mil height um, cpu fans heat sinks coolers whatever you want to call them so plenty of space to play with inside there and in terms of pci uh, pcie card support it supports full length cards and with those full length cards you have up to five individual slots of height there so you can really get away with some big beefy cards and thanks to that support of atx cards you've also got the door open to larger 
collections of PCIe cards and more aggressively cooled PCIe cards as well. There's also improvements with the front panel with USB Type-C and overall cable control on this has been improved and that's pretty much the brief. If you know if any of that's important to you, if that's what you came for this video to know what this can do, those are the good things. But why don't we roll up our sleeves and start getting our hands dirty? Now bringing the case closer to the camera there, Look at that lovely front panel there. Again, a big upgrade over the non-ventilated front panel of its predecessor. Well, I say non-ventilated, it had a bit of ventilation, but not exactly loads. This has made huge improvements on active airflow throughout the whole device. Now, again, as you can see on the side there, it is lockable, but there's a few things I'd like to really take note of on this front casing. So again, it is lockable if you choose, and as you can see there on the inside, not only is it ventilated, but we've also got a mesh panel that can be removed for cleaning and dusting. And again, that is effective throughout the entire case. Take this panel here at the top. This is a hugely ventilated panel above those PCIe slots, but moreover, it's a magnetically removable mesh panel for cleaning and such, and again, whether you go to the base of the device, where there is a further ventilation panel there that's located just underneath the PSU, with that ventilation panel being removable. So we've got plenty of panels, plenty of areas around the whole case where we've got ventilation equipped with removable mesh panels there throughout the whole system. But it doesn't stop there. Say, for example, you are someone that, you know, you like the idea of this removable front door, but you don't want to use it long term. Removing the front panel is super easy with a switch here based on the inside of the case that you simply need to push down and pull the door apart. And therefore, you've got the system ready to go without any of that front panel nonsense. With that front panel removed, we can get a better look at each of those individual bays. As mentioned, we've got a 5.25 inch cavity here that can be used for a large scale storage area, an optical drive, storage components, and more. We've also got a further ventilated panel here, which we'll check out more when we open the device up. But on top of that, we've got each of the individual bays. Now, each of the individual bays are now ventilated again in improvements over the original. And indeed, when we get inside, you'll see that the cage in improvements have also been applied as well. Much like the previous generation case, drives are removed by pinching the edge of those slots. They're not lockable, but of course that front door is. And now the new trays no longer are dependent on screws. There's a toolless design where we can go ahead and just remove the sides, then go ahead, install our drive, pop on those side panels once again, and slot them in as and when we need them. And indeed, when we look at the individual trays, we can make out that they've got the LED um, alignment there with the plastic uh, component along the inside of those trays, meaning that all, each of these are going to display those LED lights for us as well at the base of each tray. Now, if we remove each of these trays, we can make out the um, combined SATA and SAS connectors on the base of this case. Removing each of the individual bays, we can take a good look at that inside. As you can see there, we've got a lovely clean arrangement internally of each of those SATA and SAS connectors. No loose cables, but also, can you make it out there at the back? We also have additional cooling. That's not a mirror there, that is two individual fans dedicated to keeping those drive bays lovely and cool. So not only have they improved the front door of this device with further ventilation and that removable mesh, not only have they improved each of the individual trays to add further ventilation and ease of installation, but now we've got additional cooling at the rear of that case. Now those fans, they're not gonna be the quietest. Given their location at the rear of this case, uh, of the rear of the storage cage area there and the fact that all of that is going to be backing onto that motherboard which you hope has got a lot more fan control the result is going to be that i wouldn't be surprised if those fans are going to be quite noisy in operation against all of those drive bays there because thermal management is going to be problematic that said if you were going for a tray uh, going for a system like this in its desktop tower form that is metal on all sides then chances are you're already well aware that noise is going to be something of a hurdle on this device now moving forward we can have a little look at that f panel look at the side there we've got our front panel there and what you can also make out there is now we have usb type c now you are going to be dependent on your motherboard of choice about what kind of support you're going to get on those but from what i could see on the motherboard those are usb 3.2 gen 1 connectors so five gigs per second but still nonetheless, at least they've modernized things up significantly by adding those LED panels and of course the USB ports there 
that have now improved further connectivity and different kinds of connectivity. Also, look there at the base. What if we have there? We have ourselves a small factor, go for it there, a small scale 9.5 mil optical drive bay there. So we can slot in a little laptop CD drive there and not have to waste our big chunky 5.25 inch if we did want to have optical media media injection on this device that's a nice little touch although it's worth highlighting that both that that um, cavity there at the bottom and the cavity there at the top do not back onto a pre-existing uh, back uh, pcb there the only pcb is in within those individual four bay cages there the rest of them are merely cavities that you're going to have to populate and interface with with adapters and cables yourself manually now flipping things around we can look at the ports and connectivity of this case in its default state as mentioned earlier on we've got support of those five PCIe slots there at the top which do support full length cards within this and once you're looking at cases by the way that support micro uh, ITX and micro ATX cards it's good to know that even though you've got the limitations on the more small scale motherboard that you can at least take advantage of massive PCIe upgrade cards but it's Kind of a shame that this doesn't support standard full-size ATX MOBOs inside this device, given its large-scale PC chassis. I understand the reasoning. For example, if you went with a full-scale ATX, you're going to conflict with a lot of the other components of this device internally. More on that in a moment. But still, nonetheless, there is that assumption that we are looking at a case of this scale that full ATX was going to be on the table. But unfortunately, that is not the case here with a case of this size. Now... What we've also got there on the rear is an additional fan there in the middle, as mentioned earlier on. Probably not going to be as noisy as those two rear-mounted drive fans, but still nonetheless, it is a third fan to add to the mix on a metal chassis, so noise is going to be a consideration. And of course, we have got that further cavity there at the bottom, which is going to be utilised by our big old ATX PSU. And of course, we have a side-mounted MOBO slot there on the side, so again, there's a no ventilation on this panel, which is kind of surprising because that's going to be the motherboard. But given that this fan here is going to be directly in alignment with that larger 168mm max height CPU cooler, I think that's absolutely fine there. And again, they have maxed out ventilation throughout the whole of this case in so many impressive ways. Now, before I remove the side panel where all the action is, I do think it's worth removing the side panel on the right just to give you a little understanding about one of the other nice benefits about this system and its cable management. So here are all of our F cables here, our front panel cables here, and they're pretty much everything you'd expect from a system that's using Type A and Type C front panel connectors. We've got the ones for our power, reset, power on. We've got our standard USB connector, and we've got a USB Type C connector and audio in output connectors and LED light connectors there. What's really intriguing is here. If we look on the inside of this case, let's get the angle just right, you can just make out along this panel some nice rubber cavities let's bring that close to the camera you see that those rubber cavities right here these cavities here are built in to allow the cables to be funneled through now you might be thinking what's the big deal this is just a hole for the cables to go through but loose cables in a vibrating case they make noise. Not a lot, but once you've got the whole system vibrating, all of these things do add up. Now, having the cables filtering through these rubber paneled areas here that close in on them minimizes a lot of that vibration. And it isn't just here. If we turn the case right round and remove the other side panel, we find further examples of those little rubber cable captures inside the device. We've got one located at the bottom, just above the PSU, which allows the PSU cabling to not become too much of a nonsense or vibration hazard. And likewise, the dual panels there on the side for both the F panel cables and any other cables we want to use, all of which are suitably protected when the device is in operation from vibration. Overall, it's little tiny changes like that. In this case, I really like they're not novel in terms of the industry these have been used before but i really like these little improvements over the original which vastly improve 
operational ambient noise and of course on the rear well, we've got our rear fan located inside the real showstopper here is on the inside which brings us to the improvements of the storage cage inside not only is it further ventilated all the way around and again with those two active fans that are on the rear but on top of that it's actually divided into two individual four SATA board PCBs each powered by a Molex connector and an additional connector there at the top all of that if you want to utilize say for example a SAS uh, multi-lane card and a SAS card will mean that not only will this system take advantage of traditional SATA storage media but SAS storage media with an enhanced bandwidth potential is capable and possible inside this device again ventilation has been ramped up in every single way inside this casing and with this enormous cavity here at the top for more aggressive PCIe cards living inside there the limitations for what you can use inside this device are pretty subtle substantial all this adds up to a case that absolutely positively blows its predecessor out of the water and if you are looking for a DIY NAS build case with ventilation as a priority and you're not too concerned about ambient noise too much this is a solid choice it is a little pricey from what I can see online compared to other 8 bay cases in the market. We talked about a lot of them for brands like UNAS, when we talked about the John's Bow case, and even the Node A04. Compared to those, this is a more expensive case. But I will say, in terms of ventilation, it takes a lot to beat because they've really looked at a lot of their criticisms that they received in the previous generation of this device and ramped up everything else. And there is a reason why this is becoming quite a popular little case in when it's getting traded around in DIY circles because... When it comes to 24-7 operation, the cooler your rig, the less electricity it's going to use. And ultimately, with this system, I really, really like it. How would I go about improving it? Well, really, the only improvements that I can suggest here are, quite simply, include more accessories. And again, all of this would up the price. But the idea you've got a system here that is kind of but not completely SAS ready, throw in a SAS multi-lane there. Produce some SAS board version that can have like an HD mini there on the rear for you to take advantage of the SAS connectivity of this device. But really, that's it. I think the tray improvements are good. I think the idea that I can remove a lot of these mesh panels and they're magnetically attached is definitely going to improve maintenance in the long term and make it a great deal easier there. Perhaps if they could work on a version where PCIe scale can be brought back a little bit and therefore maybe support some larger MOBOs, that's another way. But I think all of these are improvements that would only increase the price further on a system that arguably is a little bit more premium priced compared to other DIY cases out there. Now, we've done a full written breakdown of this that should be linked in the description over to NAS Compares. And maybe we are we're still working on that build there in the background with uh, silver um, Silverstone cases and the Icy Dock caddies. But at the moment, I am genuinely considering migrating over to this one. But of course, if we go for this one, we lose one of those two mainline 5.2 inch caddies there. And I believe modifications are possible, but I'd rather keep things as default as possible if I can. But this has been the Silverstone CS382. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you're on pre-order for this. Maybe you were considering it already and you've got a question about this you'd like to know. Fire in the comments. Hopefully I can help you out. Apart from that, if you do need further help, free advice section over on NAS Compares. There's our Discord. There's our Ask NAS Compares. And moreover than that, you can take advantage of the comment section or the NAS Compares Inner Circle to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.